Hey everybody, very welcome to Mentoring, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about three-engined jet aircraft, tri-jets. Why did they come about in the first place? Why do you not see so many of them anymore? And is there any future for them going forward? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is a website that offers you thousands of courses in pretty much any area that you might be interested in. I use it personally to improve my Spanish skills, but the 500 first of you who uses this link can try out any course that you want for free for the first two months. So check it out. Right guys, so today we're going to be talking about trijets. Now, I personally think that some of the most majestic, best-looking, gorgeous aircraft out there are tri-jets. I'm thinking about the Lockheed 1011 TriStar, for example, but you also have examples like the Tupelo 154, the Hawker Sidley Trident, the um, DC-10 and the MD-11. All right, they are great looking, huge aircraft. Okay, now in order to understand why they came about in the first place, we have to go back to the 1970s. And in the 1970s, the airlines were starting to ask for slightly bigger aircraft, all right, bigger than the Boeing 737 that they had available, for example, and that had slightly better performance. Now, in order to add performance, they needed to add engines because we still didn't have these hyper-efficient um, high bypass ratio engines that we have today. Uh, but what you need to understand when it comes to aircraft and buying aircraft is that the single most expensive part is going to be the engine. It's the most expensive to buy and it's the most expensive to maintain. So aircraft manufacturers and airlines tend to want as few engines as possible while still maintaining the performance. So if you couldn't get enough performance with two engines and you didn't want four engines, well then obviously the solution is three engines, but it comes with a problem. If you have three engines, it means that you have an uneven amount of engines. So this means that that third engine has to be placed somewhere on the aircraft that doesn't produce any yaw in case of an engine failure. Remember I talked about that in the uh, episode about engine placement? So there's only really one place that you can place the engine if you don't want any yaw. And that's going to be in the center line of the aircraft, which is at the back. Okay. So that's what the, engine, what the aircraft manufacturers started looking into. Now, placing the engine at the back comes with a few problems. They were solved in different ways. Like, for example, the, uh, the Lockheed 1011, the TriStar, they incorporated the engine into the body of the aircraft. So at the back of the aircraft, the engine was incorporated inside. Now, this is great because it becomes very aerodynamic. Uh, and also, when it, when it exerts the trust, it's going to be in the center line of the aircraft and it's going to be in the center of the aircraft. So it will not have any kind of yawing or pitching um, impact. But of course, the problem is that the air has to be coming into the engine in some way. And the way they solve this, say, similar to the, um, the Hawker Sidley TriStar or Hawker Sidley uh, Trident, as they created an S-duct. This means that the, uh, the air for the engine is being sucked in from above the body and then it's going down through an S-duct into the engine and then being exposed in back. Now this is very aerodynamic but also extremely expensive and complicated to, to make. And it also has another problem. The problem is that this aircraft is now purposefully built for one specific engine. So if down the line the engine manufacturers comes up with a more efficient type of engine, bigger type of engine, it cannot be introduced into the same engine bay because it's going to be too big. So you essentially need to redesign the entire back of the aircraft, which is going to be extremely expensive. Now the um, the DC-10 and the MD-11 had a slightly different take. What they did was they actually incorporated the engine into the fin of the aircraft. This was good because it meant that they they had easy access for maintenance, for example, and they they could also fairly easily, or at least a little bit more easily, redesign the fin if needed with a bigger engine. The downside was that it was not as aerodynamic, and also, when you add thrust with an engine that's situated above the center line of the aircraft, it means that you're going to get a pitch down moment. If you take thrust off, you're going to get a pitch up moment, the same if you get an engine failure. But this could all be worked through. 
Anyway, so what you have to understand as well is on top of the fact that you now had three engines which gave extra thrust and extra performance. The really big reason that the airlines wanted that third engine was that before the 1990s there were no ATOPS approval. Right, ATOPS has had different meanings throughout the years but extended twin air operations basically. Uh, before the 1990s two engine aircraft were not allowed to fly further away from a usable alternate than 60 minute single engine flight time. And what this means is that you couldn't go straight out over the Atlantic. You would have to fly fairly close to the coastline and it would be a longer route. Now, if you had two engines, or, sorry, three engines or more, those rules did not apply to you because the aviation authorities thought, eh, you have three engines, you have better redundancy. It means that if one engine fails, you can still continue to fly with two. So go ahead, fly out over the oceans. This was a huge deal. Okay, very, very important for the airlines. But during the late 1980s and the beginning of 1990s, the engine manufacturers started to lobbying the um, uh, aviation authorities and said, listen, our engines are actually extremely reliable and they're becoming stronger and stronger all the time. The aviation authorities had a look at it and said, yeah, actually, we agree to that. And they started issuing ATOPS approvals to certain airlines. And this meant that now you could fly with two engines further away than 60 minutes and you could cross oceans with two engine aircraft. This combined with the fact that the engines were now getting bigger, more powerful all the time, meant that in the 1990s, you started having aircraft that had the same kind of performance, the same possible takeoff weight, the same range, and you still had ATOPS approval. So this meant that the, the trijet started becoming obsolete. They were more expensive to maintain because they had one extra engine. Uh, they obviously were using more fuel because three engines tends to use more than two. And there was no real benefit to them anymore. And this is why you will see that the heyday of the, of the trijets was during the 1980s when about 15, 1600 of them uh, were flying. And then that started to reduce as ATOPS was um, incorporated. And, um, and now we only see them in some freighter operations, really. Um, which is a shame because I, I love the look of them. So what about the future then? Well, you will probably continue to see trijets, especially in the, uh, the private market, the private jet market. The reason for that, that is that ATOPS approval is still a little bit complicated to attain and you have to um, apply with a lot of rules in order to get an ATOPS approval. Uh, so if you are a small operator and want to fly private jets, if you have three engines, you don't need ATOPS approval, you can still just shoot away out of the ocean without it. So you'll probably see that. Um, the Falcon series private jet, for example, they all have three engines on them. And something that I think is really, really exciting is that Boom Technologies. The, um, there is a company called Boom who is, uh, who is building the second generation of supersonic uh, passenger aircraft. They are uh, at the moment working on their prototype, the Baby Boom, and the Boom is expected to have three jet engines. So it's going to be a tri-jet and I would love to get my hands on one of those. So that's what we're looking into the future. We'll probably continue to see tri-jets going forward. Guys, that's what I had about tri-jets. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, then as always, send them in below as comments or get into the Mentor Aviation app, guys. There's more and more of us there every time and you can just tag at Mentor and that's going to send a message directly to me and I will answer it whenever I have time to do so. Also, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, as I've always said to you guys, I will only uh, show you companies on this channel that will add value to you. Okay, Skillshare is definitely one of these. You can do in there. If you use the link, the first 500 of you are going to get two months completely for free. So it's completely risk-free. Just go in, check it out and uh, find whatever course that you're interested in. Like I said before, I am using it to improve my Spanish skills. Maybe you want to design stuff or improve or your picture editing skills or whatever it might be. Check it out. I promise you that you'll find something good and let me know what you think. Also, 
check out mentorpilot.com. Mentorpilot.com is my own website. I am working hard on incorporating a lot of uh, um, content that you might like. So there's going to be news feeds about the aviation industry. I'm going to do blogs in there. Uh, there's a chat that you guys can hang out on. And uh, it's also likely that I will be starting to feature flight schools that I have checked out and that I can recommend to you inside there. So go to mentorpilot.com, check it out, and let me know if there's any feature that you want me to incorporate. Have an absolutely fantastic day, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>